All right, we're going to go just a little bit of a different direction this week with some of our lessons. Uh, we have been talking about drafting and how to actually draw uh, and draft different objects and different shapes. Uh, that's, of course, important for the drafts person and the engineer who needs to know how to uh, design and uh, create blueprints and drawings for people to um, follow when they build. Uh, but even for um, the everyday workers who are going to be reading the prints and making the parts, they have to also have to have an understanding of how to look at and how to interpret these prints. So this week we're concentrating a little bit more on the actual blueprint reading or the interpretation of the actual drawings that we're going to be looking at. We're starting here uh, today with this um, review activity, this guided practice on this two-dimensional drawing, and we're going to be talking about uh, the relationships, the geometric relationships that are on a part. So because we have to look at these relationships, we have to hold them, and of course when we're making the part, we have to be able to maintain these same geometric relationships that are on the print. So this is where your real-world geometry and that math that you're learning in your geometry class applies to what we make out on the shop floor. So as you have a look at your guided practice worksheet, of course you've got, been given a uh, worksheet that has a bunch of questions and then you've also been given a drawing. So uh, there for number one, uh, the question reads, consider the four geometric relationships, parallel, perpendicular, concentric, and tangent. Uh, what is the relationship that exists between? And then you're given a series. So the first one is what's the relationship that exists between line A, which is this line right here, and line D, which is this line here? Well, that's pretty obvious. You can tell that real easy. Both of those lines are parallel, so the answer there would be parallel. The next one is uh, line D and line F. Now, this one might be a little bit difficult to understand because this doesn't come down to a full corner. We do have this arc or this radius E in here uh, that kind of combines F and D. But the actual relationship between D and F is perpendicular. So that is perpendicular on there. Now, the next one asks for the relationship between line J and line I. And this is a term that many of you probably haven't heard of yet, but the relationship here is tangent. So at that point where line J comes up and just touches uh, the arc I, that is the tangency point. And uh, really on this particular arc I, you got two tangency points. You have the one tangency point here where J runs into I, and you also have a tangency point up here uh, where H runs into I as well, and that's they're just touching right there at the high point of the circle on that. So tangent is uh, the relationship between line J and arc I. Next one is line M and line O. So Line M runs this way, line O runs this way. Both of those are at an angle, so, uh, and this, some people might not catch on to this, but even though both of these lines are angled, they're angled at exactly the same angle, so these are parallel lines on this part, so those are parallel. Line arc, or arc A, line A, I'm sorry, line A and arc B. What's that relationship? Again, that is a tangent point. So you have a tangent point right here where the end point of line A comes in and just touches uh, the end point of arc B right there. So the next question asks for circle R which is this circle right here, and, cir and arc B. So what's the relationship between R and B? Well, I think this is probably kind of a, one of those um, errors. I don't think that there's really, there is a relationship here of R, but that is tied into this circle. So I think there's actually a letter missing here. So, And what they really want in this question is, 
what is the relationship between this circle right here and this arc, arc B? Well, that relationship is that they are concentric, and that's a, a term that you might not have heard before either, concentric. So let me spell that out, concentric. Uh, and what that means, what concentricity means, is that uh, they share the same center point. So this circle and its center point shares the same center point as arc B. Now, of course, arc B is a larger, has a larger radius than this circle. That's why it comes out here, but they are both concentric and they relate to each other. Uh, the next one is line F and line J. So looking at the print again, here is line F. Over here is line J. Well, again, the relationship that we see there is that they're, they are parallel again. So that's parallelism. Now, part two says to fill in the blank with the geometric name, arc, chord, shape, etc. for each of the following letters. So let's look at letter L. So that is this uh, right here. So, And of course, we would call this an arc. Now, to be more specific, this is a 90 degree arc. So it starts here uh, and it goes to here. So that is a 90 degree arc otherwise also known as a radius. So sometimes we refer to that uh, in the trades more as a radius than we do as an arc. But it is a 90 degree arc um, for as a radius. And it's talking about shape P. What is the shape of shape P? Well, that's simple. Five-sided five shape is a pentagon. C as related to B. So here is C. And here's B. Now, what you probably don't recognize about B is that uh, B actually kind of comes all the way up here. It's cut off, but it keeps on going around to here, but it's cut off here by what is called a cord. So that is a cord that cuts that off. And a lot of times on parts, uh, sometimes that's done for clearance issues. There might be something else uh, that's in here, so they kind of have to cut away part of that radius to make room uh, for something and give clearance so but that's called a chord so circle q so well uh, this is the circle q so q is a circle uh, and that is part of this bolt circle anytime you see a series of circles around a same center point that's called a bolt circle uh, you're probably most familiar with bolt circles uh, in the placement of the lug nuts on the tire on your car. So uh, on that rim, those are a bolt circle that are there that your lug nuts go on to to help hold your t tire onto uh, your car and keep it from falling off. All right, so now it's talking about I. Well, up here is I. We have another arc, again, being more specific. Uh, it starts here. And it goes to there, so that would be a 90 degree arc. Again, might also hear that referred to as a radius, so that is a arc. Now, N, so let's look at N. Well, here's N. Now, this one's a little tricky because it doesn't start and stop at our typical 0, 90, uh, 180, 270 degrees. It actually starts down here and goes all the way around. So it is an arc, but this is a full 180 degree arc. It's just with that angle, I'm gonna kind of draw this here as far as the center points so that you can see the relationship. But it is a full 180 degree arc that goes around uh, at that point. Again, whatever this slot is done, it's probably uh, for some type of clearance or maybe they got a bolt or something coming up out of there uh, that would lock this down. So. All sorts of reasons why they might put this type of geometry and shape onto a, a part that they want made. All right, so uh, question three there asks for how many degrees measured clockwise along the center line circle is it from center point to center point? All right, so remember, so clockwise goes this way. So we got to measure center point Q to center point S. Well, uh, here's our center points. So, and if we're going clockwise, 
That's going to go all the way around this way. Remember I talked about that bolt circle. You have to know some more information here. Uh, how many degrees are in a full complete circle? Well, if you remember from your geometry class, there are 360 degrees in a circle. So, and we have basically that circle. We could say if we draw a circle, this bolt circle here, uh, around where the center points uh, of Q, R, and S fall, uh, all we need to do is divide 360 by these three points. Well, that means that there is 120 degrees uh, between each of these, radial degrees between each of these. So, so to go counterclockwise or go clockwise from point Q to the center of S is 120. 240 so so we are going 240 degrees between Q and S clockwise next one is from center point S to center point Q so center point S to center point Q well we'll see that's uh, just one of these divisions so that's a hundred and twenty degrees there with that now number four ask what type of angle is formed between M and J. So if you look at this line, uh, here's line J, here's line M. That is an acute angle. Uh, type of angle formed between O and K. Notice this is greater uh, than 90 degrees, so this is an obtuse, an obtuse angle. Now, how many degrees are in arc N? Where is arc N? Again, we mentioned that there is arc N, and we notice that's 180 degrees. How many degrees are in arc E? So here we go. This starts here, goes there. So there is 90 degrees in arc E. How many degrees are in arc L? Again, there are 90 degrees in arc L. And what is the name of the feature shown between uh, lines F, G and H. Notice we have this uh, little 45 degree line here. Um, this is a pretty common feature um, in the industry, whether you're working in woods or metals, where we basically cut off a corner. Uh, most of the time it's at 45 degrees, uh, but that is called a chamfer. So that's the relationship here This between F, G and H. That is what we call a chamfer. So there you have it. Uh, that's how to do this particular problem. Uh, go ahead. Now, this drawing and this worksheet that I used here to demonstrate and give you directions on is different than the actual assignment, so make sure you are looking at the assignment and reading the questions and answering them off of the worksheet and drawing that was provided to you. So, good luck. If you have any questions, make sure that you uh, send us a email or just post a question in the comments section uh, in Google Classroom. Uh, we'll be glad to help you out and answer your questions on how these geometric relationships work as we're looking at two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects.